So welcome to our session today. Uh, this is my, my name is Gyokan Karakush and I will, I'm joining you from Istanbul. Uh, we are starting a new series with the Eunice Emmer Institute in London, a architecture and design talk series. Uh, and this is our inaugural session, inaugural session. Um, and uh, we, we're gonna attempt in the next uh, six months, a year that we pursue these talks to try to connect Turkish culture uh, through its modernist past and into its contemporary present. So we will be speaking to modernist period and what aspects of Turkish culture were transferred uh, and moved forward into our contemporary age. Um, uh, with this uh, idea of trying to understand what the global position of Turkish culture is today and what aspects of Turkish culture are viable uh, in architecture and design. So today, uh, our talk is focused on uh, Alpasan Ataman uh, and uh, our talk is Alpas Ataman's Drawings of the Spatial Typology of Ottoman Architecture. Uh, and we have, uh, we have Yokan Avjoğlu with us. Just as a matter of introduction, uh, I want to uh, introduce uh, Yokan. Uh, Yokan is a architect. Um, he was uh, born, in, uh, born here in Istanbul, uh, 1961. Uh, he has a architecture education at Konya Selçuklu University. Uh, after that, he pursued many workshops and research here in Istanbul uh, amongst the uh, leading architects of that time in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, his explorations of aspects of Turkish architecture um, uh, are part of his also unique experience in exploring uh, Turkey and Anatolia, which is uh, something that he does today and has done extensively as a very good idea of uh, the historical and archaeological remains that we have here in Turkey. Um, and uh, we'll be discussing Alpas and Ataman. Alpas and Ataman, um, as I said, uh, is a, also an architect. We lost him last year. He was born in 1944 and attended the uh, Güzel Sanata, the Academy of Fine Arts here in Istanbul, graduating in 1966. He worked uh, with uh, also well-known architects focusing on Turkish cultures, specifically Sedat Hakke Adem. Uh, Adam was known for his many books and research on Turkish house, um, two or three uh, editions of that book. Um, and he later actually, uh, interestingly, worked in London uh, for a number of years in the 70s and uh, returned to Turkey in the 1980s, 90s to work uh, in various architectural offices here. And he worked for 10 years here at uh, Global Architectural Development, Gökhan Avcılı's office. We are joining you from Istanbul, from the offices of Global Architectural Development, GAD. Gökhan is there uh, in our main meeting room. Uh, and we have, uh, I'm upstairs in the same facility. So we have a really quick film that I want to show you now based on Alpas and Ataman's work, which is an exhibition that we put together as the God Foundation uh, two months ago. Uh, and it uh, was one of our first exhibitions. So let me Put that on the screen here. Hold on, share screen. Hold on, share screen. Share. And then. Abbas'tan Ataman'ın Timeless Architecture sergisi e, önemli. Abbas'tan Ataman e, geçen sene maalesef kaybettik. 
kendisi e, yıllardır e, biraz gizli saklı diyebileceğimiz bir ortamda bir takım çalışmalar yaptı. Yani kendine ait bir dünyası vardı. O dünyada burada biraz yansıtmaya çalıştık. E, God Vakfı olarak. Alpaslan'ın dünyası Osmanlı mimarisine bağlı bir dünya. O, kendi çizdiği Osmanlı mimarisinin arkasındaki dinamikleri burada görebiliyoruz bu sergide. Herkese Alpaslan Ataman arşiv sergisine geldikleri için teşekkür ediyoruz ve daha çok arkadaşımızı mimarları, öğrencileri bekliyoruz. Bu bir e, tam tamına bir retrospektif sergisi değil ya da bu tam tamına disiplinli bir sergi değil. Tam tersine sanki onun ofisiymiş gibi onun, ondan bize kalan ne varsa e, bizimle paylaştığı ne varsa, bize bıraktığı ne varsa her şeyi bir arada görebildiğimiz ve inceleyebildiğimiz bir sergi düzeni. Aslında düzensizlik içinde düzen e, onu biraz kişiliğiyle ilgili olarak hem aynı zamanda çok disiplinli birisiydi ama aynı zamanda çok da konudan konuya daldan dala hızlı düşünebilen birisiydi. Dolayısıyla buradaki paylaşmaya çalıştığımız serginin hem bu düzendeki içeriği hem de gün yüzüne çıkmamış ama günlük hayatta bizi yönlendirmiş küçük eskizler, ki biz ona yani işte çizerek düşünme diyoruz, thinking by hand. Ee, hem bizim günlük projelerimizde hem de e, herhangi bir e, öğle yemeği sırasında sorduğumuz bir sorunun cevabı olarak bize bir sokakla, bir binayla, bir külle ya da manastırla verdiği cevapları içeriyor. Ee, burada lütfen e, bu serginin e, ziyaretçisi olun ve Kendiniz keşfedin Alpaslan Ataman bu dünyadan geldi geçti, neler düşündü ve bizlere neler miras bıraktı. Okay, stop share. Okay, so um... Uh, Alpaslan Ataman, as I said, uh, as you can see, we had an exhibition here in Istanbul uh, at the JD Gallery and the JD Foundation. Um, lasted about two or three months, uh, right in between at the end of the, at the beginning of uh, of this year. Uh, now let's proceed and let's talk a little bit uh, uh, with Gökhan. Um, thanks a lot, Gökhan, for your time. Uh, we appreciate your presence here today. Um, and I will, I'd like for you just a little bit, maybe with this presentation, speak a little bit about the office first, um, and then we can kind of move on uh, and look at some of Alpaslan, Alpaslan Ataman sketches um, in, um, in uh, uh, this presentation. Okay, so let's get this thing rolling here. View full page. Okay, you guys see that? Yeah. Okay, Gyoka, you just tell me when to, uh, to move the slides. Okay, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Karakush, uh, having asked about that uh, kind of timeless architecture by Vaya on Alpasana Taman. Uh, I know him the, uh, many years ago, approximately 40 years ago. And then always the relationship was a uh, love and hate relationship, let's say. Uh, always we discussed about uh, what is it today architecture and what was uh, before the 19th century and, uh, and also what will be the next generation architecture. And then suddenly we, uh, uh, we get together uh, 
uh, one of the very famous Turkish uh, uh, societies, the coffee, the name is uh, House Cafe, next to the Teşvikiye uh, Cami. And uh, we discussed the all day and then night and uh, uh, weekend uh, about what is the uh, what is the, the real architecture and then uh, started to some sketches and discussing about the, what is the uh, the uh, first uh, drawing about the, any any type of architecture any type of the building what what is the first drawing and on the side on the our mind uh, and then how can we develop the, our ideas on the building what is the, our messages to site and to our culture to next generation so there was there was this uh... A meeting of you with Al Pastan with regard to uh, this kind of significance and uh, of architecture uh, over a forty years uh, uh, kind of constant dialogue, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But he 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 never ever uh, liked to talk about the, the message. Always mm -hmm. tries to understand uh, what is the architecture meaning. Right. Okay. About the making plus meaning, making okay. plus meaning. How can we make? How can we try? You know, how can we understand the, the meaning about the what we make and what we draw, what we design, what we build? It's very complicated, maybe uh, understanding this idea. But uh, uh, if we go to the, our uh, culture, starts from the, you know, the Anatolia, 12,000 yes. years old, from the Göbekli Tepe, he know, he, you know, the, he always talk about the, uh, the first starting to uh, put on the, any ball pieces as a stone, as a, you know, the, it's a, the earth, what is that? Okay, then let's uh, uh, just write, there's a quick introduction of you I, a little bit, I think is, uh, your relationship is important. Uh, um, uh, Gyokan Avjola is the head of global architectural development. Again, uh, this is a Istanbul-based office, but he's also the head of the GAD Foundation, which has uh, sponsored some of these uh, events um, with regard to Alpa Sanatman before. So this is kind of important. Uh, that the GAD Foundation is something that has been set up to do this kind of research uh, on uh, architecture, architecture, culture, architecture, culture here in Turkey and globally. Um, uh, in terms of the, uh, the works of the office, um, the GAD works in a number of areas uh, and contexts from focusing on uh, matters of nature, religion, history, street culture, uh, e eating, uh, gastronomy, wellness, thermal, and has been uh, created a number of buildings in this area. Uh, so this is the context in which Alpasam Ataman uh, has uh, this architecture office uh, complex. So Yoka, let's start off with his uh, this this book here. Um, this Mimari de Jetfel Duzen. You can translate it into. Um, how do you want to translate that? You give it a shot. Uh, yeah. The ruler rationale in the rule of the ruling rationale in architecture, uh, the uh, uh, anonymous identity of uh, uh, of building, right? Right? Would you yeah. translate that like that? The, the first book in architecture uh, uh, society uh, started from Vitruvius. Uh, almost uh, uh, 70 or 75 uh, uh, AD. And then uh, there are many uh, architecture books or, you know, the kind of statement books. The, his books about uh, if you put any, 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 any uh, material on the material, 
uh, you do uh, statement. That's the, his idea. So the <laughs> statement, uh, in, fact, in fact, this image here on the bottom right, where we see this linear uh, rational system starting with a system of domes, uh, moving uh, through uh, different vaulting systems uh, uh, into uh, the kind of modern period. Uh, so this, uh, he was trying to find a universal language, correct? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, that part, I think about the, what we did with him together, right? And you can next, please. Let's start the... I would like to explain the, what we did together. Next. So here, uh, for example, uh, going from this more universal approach to looking specifically at his, uh, uh, his own study of Ottoman architecture uh, and the, uh, its organization and rationale. What, can you, what are we looking at here, for example, in terms of plan and section? Yeah. And about the, uh, you, you can you can follow all of that uh, uh, presentation. Please, the next. Actually, always that we discuss with him. Uh, what is the uh, there are you know the. We, uh, in, in architecture uh, uh, history, also the, uh, uh, the uh, Homo sapiens history, uh, some uh, classifying some uh, specific name, like, you know, the, the Gothic and Baroque and Rococo and Modern and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what we think with him, the, the talking about and uh, understanding about our history, the Homo sapiens history, non-chronological. Oh, we don't need the uh, making them uh, uh, classify. It's positive. Classify and uh, and uh, uh, understanding our. Uh, 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 human history, uh, non-chronological. Uh, under the circumstances, if we go there uh, without any uh, historian uh, uh, classification, we, we feel very uh, free and uh, uh, freedom we do uh, design uh, without any uh, no, no. any rule and like a child and we design and uh, perfectly precisely and also freedomly okay we're having a little bit of problems with the sharing of this presentation so give us one second to get it up here, okay yeah, more human human humanized and uh, we feel ourselves uh, really concentrate on our, uh, what we need and what we want like to do. Okay, can we see the slide now? Yes. Okay, good. So uh, we have some problem with the full screen, so I'm gonna keep it here. So just to get back to what we were looking at earlier and just to kind of review, sorry, we we're unable to, to do the share properly, but now we're, we're back. Um, uh, the, let's look at the first uh, slide here, this Mimar de Jetra du Zenit. Let's just review what we were looking at because we weren't able to see. So uh, uh, what are we seeing here, Gyokan? Uh, this, this, this attempt to try to create a, a rationalism uh, in the built environment, looking uh, at the right from uh, bottom right, we can see from a period of domes to kind of uh, different types of, of vaulting systems uh, up into uh, uh, the modern period. So uh, Alpastan's attempt to kind of create a kind of uh, uh, umbrella theory about 
about uh, architecture uh, and its uh, uh, spatial organization and uh, architectural organization. What, 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 what do you think was behind this attempt uh, to do this? Yeah, two things. The first of all, the uh, standardization. Second one, uh, uh, systematically, uh, how can we build it up? If you uh, go in, uh, in the, any any kind of the uh, uh, design and uh, and anything building or factory or ship or uh, train. Also, now we would like to add the uh, uh, spaceship. Right. And next time we will see that maybe you, you realize we, we work on the ozone. Yes. The, the, today's the spaceship. Yes. The, most of it is the, uh, the sixth one, uh, especially uh, now we work on uh, L Elon Musk uh, and also Elon Musk uh, and also uh, Jeff Bezos uh, news uh, yes. spaceship. So this kind of universal theme, I think you, this, this is, uh, you can see here in his sketches um, that he was attempting always to find this uh, system uh, through uh, uh, a constant uh, process of sketching and figuring out uh, certain geometries and spatial systems. Um, this is a, a, a number of uh, leaves from his sketchbooks. Uh, uh, but he was also, as you said earlier, trying to uh, connect these into uh, certain cultural uh, traditions, and, uh, both in Turkey, but also in Western civilization. Can you speak a little bit about, it? for example, on the bottom slide here, you see he's used the word uh, ritual, kavram salkalab, ritual. You know, we're looking at, um, uh, at how uh, in a, both a, a mosque uh, in the Kudiye on one side, and how that can be applied to a basilica. Can you speak a little bit about his connecting of these uh, architecture to these to these to these aspects of, uh, uh, for example, ritual, religion, and, and and culture. Yes, last year we were working on the, the spaceship. Right. Uh, if you get in any human in any building or ship or spaceship, and uh, the same. Uh, uh, same idea and also the same uh, methods. And so you're the, saying that there is a kind of connection between what we're seeing here applied to uh, Ottoman architecture or Byzantine architecture and what can be applied to a, uh, a design of a spaceship today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, let's move on to uh, some of his sketchbooks of Ottoman architecture. Can you describe uh, some of uh, what you're seeing here in terms of what, what is he trying to get at? For example, he says here on the left-hand side, Osmanlı Kent Yapubimleri Standard. So he's looking for some standards in the Ottoman city on the, on the, an image on the life, this, this uh, uh, section of different, uh, uh, of different uh, superimposed pieces of Ottoman architecture. What, what was he trying to do there, you think? Yeah, you know, the uh, uh, Ottoman follows before the, for them, uh, Byzantium and also the Roman and also the Greek and also the Mesopotamian culture. And then uh, how can we build and live uh, perfectly, precisely and uh, happily and uh, what we designed to build the buildings. Did he try to understand and uh, what is the perfect volume? What, is, what do you mean by perf what is the perfect volume? I don't know. Right. Yeah. What do you think he knew and thought what was the perfect volume? The feeling good is about the about you know uh, all Asian uh, Asian uh, culture uh, tries try to understand the, what is the happiness, what, right. is, the, what is the perfect uh, aesthetics, what is the perfect uh, uh, colors and uh, dimensions. Right. I think so. You, if you look at the, the left uh, sketches, yes, 
you feel you know the the you the two persons yeah uh, that that there and then other one you know the it's not about the, the, the made by the stone also the wood the how can you feel good right any 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 spaces uh, what is the you know the, it's always you know the Greek culture and then as an art uh, sculpture uh, uh, trying to understand also philosophy the Greek philosophy and also the uh, Roman philosophy and also the uh, the modern uh, idea tries to understand what is the perfect for human uh, body and right. human mind. So uh, Alpaslan had a very systematic way of approaching uh, his, these studies uh, of the, uh, uh, especially the uh, building system of the Ottomans. Uh, and intri intriguingly enough, he's one of the few people that put together, uh, as you see in this image in the bottom left-hand corner, both the more formal uh, uh, state architecture, uh, but also looking also domestic architecture, making connections. As you can see here, uh, there is a, a number of mosque uh, sections uh, from different uh, uh, from different places. He brought together. Uh, there's a turbe here, but then he connects it through also this example uh, of uh, this uh, uh, this konak, which is an Ottoman mansion, the one uh, which is a domestic building. Uh, I what, what do you, you know, this, this connection of the more formal Ottoman uh, 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 state architecture, with this domestic architecture, what do you feel he was, uh, was, was, was uh, what, what was his interest in that, uh, that in discussions you had with him about that? Yeah, it's about the dimensions. Let's say, you know, the, today the, the Bitcoin also, you know, the, some uh, economical uh, uh, approaching to, the, to uh, uh, business side, they have tried to find uh, what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, mathematical formula. Right. So there's a mathematics behind all this. Exactly. Right, what right. is the uh, 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 basic uh, numbers for? Right. In any anything about you know the, the, the any uh, money and you know the. the the shareholding and all that kind of things. The architecture also is, uh, tries to understand 12,000 years, right. that what is the real minimum uh, size for uh, one person or community? Uh, right. What is the uh, dimension? What is the uh, 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 hierarchical uh, relationship if you if you create a, you know the uh, three by three meters, yes. How can we create a the, the, uh, uh, high ceiling? from this basic unit? This three by three unit uh, that uh, he uh, is a constant theme of, of his work. For example, here we have sketches of he did of what he labels. Ottoman period, first initial periods, uh, and his uh, constant work on the Kudirat. Uh, and this is the Beylik period in Bursa. What do you think uh, the, this, his interest in, in his Ottoman uh, Kudirat from, from this period onward, what, 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 what is it about the Ottoman uh, uh, Kudirat system that, that you think is important and what fascinated him about it? Yeah, he, he realized uh, Ottoman uh, Empire uh, uh, exactly uh, understood because of he, you know, the, he realized that uh, before the, the Byzantine and other uh, Roman and Greek and also the other uh, civilization uh, discovered that kind of the numbers. But today, what is the art today is the problem. The, uh, our own uh, building codes, relation codes, you know, the uh, and uh, condition codes about uh, the own municipalities, they rejected that kind of numbers. Right. We don't know why. We don't know why they left that kind of formulas. Right. Also, 
excited about that kind of the, uh, uh, approaching the uh, creating the new, uh, more especially modern cities. So there was like a kind of uh, uh, rationale in this mathematics. You're saying that uh, went to the Ottomans and the Ottomans, uh, and the Byzantines and, and, and Romans before that. That uh, Al Pasan was attempting to kind of codify uh, in these drawings, uh, and uh, uh, I think these drawings show his his great detail in which he's he's doing this, uh, yeah. and the great systematic like this drawing where he does a certain typological uh, uh, exploration of all these spaces and then builds them up to show that the real, uh, that to show that there's a, uh, as you can see here, uh, 3.5 meters uh, and uh, extrapolates this out into a whole system. Exactly, you always fight about uh, the, uh, are, uh, there are uh, fantastic relationship, mathematics and uh, aesthetics. Uh, uh, always they uh, 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 their relationship with them. So th these drawings, are what always fascinates me is how with he's able to create relationships across different building types. For example, we have a Turbe, Hazne, Ojax, Sebil. So he's connecting really this whole Ottoman world, this built environment in this very codified, standardized way. And he's seeing that there is uh, uh, a very interesting rationale behind this, uh, which then I think he 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 uh, extended uh, into his uh, uh, plan uh, analyses. Uh, we always we always see these plan analyses where it's basically based on this number. Like for example, go kind of in this drawing here in the middle, all these different plans. Can you explain how he kind of like in your experience with him, how he would go from us, you know, let's say. Uh, six to four, like what was, it, it, it's always seemed to be some ratios behind that. Yeah, it, you, you see this, uh, some, some drawings shows us the, some uh, very uh, historical the buildings, but what we designed uh, with him uh, uh, a couple of years ago, how can we build it up in, in, in Mars? Yes. Or other planet. Yeah, you, you're, so basically your argument is saying uh, is al Baslan's understanding is such a universal argument that it can then be applied to life, uh, human life, wherever, uh, wherever it happens. Uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, in terms of uh, Ottoman architecture, I mean, you're somebody that studied Ottoman architecture uh, and there is a number of historians of Ottoman architecture. What do you think separates al Baslan, who was not an academician and he was not a, uh, a professor of architectural history. What do you think separates his approach that you see here uh, uh, versus what we see as the history of Ottoman architecture by architectural historians? What, what, what's different about his uh, approach uh, to Ottoman architecture? Very important thing. He always uh, working on uh, uh, the, always advise us thinking by hand. So drawing was a, and sketching was, a, was an instrumental part of this, his, his approach. And then, uh, for example, the, 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 that, that kind of the, uh, works, not only the understanding the history, also how can we build that in, the, in Mars? Or yeah, got it. Our new uh, civilization. So this book is sort of his uh, one and only published work uh, that had wide distribution. Uh, his Biz Gözöp Eden Külye'ye, Osman ve Külye'ye, Kamusal Mekan Mantı. When did you see this book initially? And what, 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 what were you impressed by it when you first did uh, see this book? I'm, uh, what I'm say, seeing now, you know, the, uh, how can we build up the, uh, by 3D uh, printers uh, on Mars? Right. Because uh, very uh, so you see the system, so you just see the system as being relevant uh, here to 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 any type of living. Earth. But can you speak a little bit about this uh, uh, about this book? What what about this book is important to you? This book, book that you see in front of you. Book about you know the five by five meters. Let's say the minimum uh, small places. Yeah. You can that in the living room or. Uh, 
to put in a bathroom, also uh, a bedroom, five by five meters, very uh, useful uh, size of the, uh, of the architecture uh, space. And uh, it starts from the, the five by five, and then yes. you can 10 by 10, 15 by 10, and then you can, it's an uh, uh, algorithmic, al algorithmic. algorithmic approach. So basically your argument is saying this algorithmic approach you see here is like it could be applied to uh, building in Mars, building in, in spaceships, things like this, because it has a kind of growth ability to grow and expand, like for example, in this image here, where, uh, and, and this is part of the DNA of the Ottoman system that-, that, that uh, you yeah. can uh, different kind of the, uh, dimension because of uh, site conditions. You can cut and uh, you can modify and you can customize uh, any places, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, any kind of the uh, 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 typology. You can create an uh, 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 school and uh, also uh, public restaurant and also uh, public spaces and also. Right. The, so this uh, thinking, but thinking by hand, Gyokan, uh, this thinking by hand, the sketching and understanding architecture uh, and building up these algorithmic uh, geom geometries. Uh, what do you think is uh, you know, you know, obviously the Ottoman. Uh, period is rich in this, uh, and it provides a kind of excellent way to see all this uh, in, a, in an architecture culture over four or five hundred years. Uh, can you explain a little bit about, you know, I, I also see Alpasan's work is very modernist in trying to find some of these, these mathematical relationships. Can you describe his relationship to Ottoman architecture as a modernist? What do you think as a modernist architect, because he did do modern works, what was uh, the, the, you know, what do you think he was able to, 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 to bring to us uh, about Ottoman architecture? Yeah, actually we didn't talk about uh, any uh, uh, classification about the modern world and local, only change the materials. Yeah, which is an interesting thing. So let's just hold on it, for that. The it, material has changed, but the ultimate spatial organization remains the same uh, throughout uh, these periods, both Ottoman period and perhaps before that, Byzantine, Roman uh, and Greek. Yeah, and then only uh, change the building techniques, and also uh, right. the, the building materials and 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 talked about the city, but now we are uh, uh, running to twenty uh, first century, and now uh, maybe we we'll change to many things about what we did in twenty century. Swan century, we uh, realized and discovered the many things, but also we created the many side effects. Right, right. So and here we have some images of this exhibition we performed at the, that we uh, uh, organized here in Istanbul, where we saw a lot of uh, Alpastan sketches. And you know, I want to impress upon our our viewers that um, you know <laughs> Alpastan was was a kind of private individual. This is the first time these were exposed. And this system, he didn't really go out of his way to explain this system to many people. So um, what we're saying to you today about this, you know, this underlying sketching and learning by hand, learning architecture, do that. The Ottoman, uh, his exploration of Ottoman architecture in a very deep and uh, rational and mathematic way, I think is unique. Uh, and it's something that uh, uh, allows us to see a whole world in Ottoman architecture that I think nobody else has been able to describe satisfactory that then we can take moving into the future. So in terms of the series, I believe the kind of ways that the Ottoman system adapts to different uh, sites, different programs was very a uh, kind of unique algorithmic way of approaching it. Kind of, uh, Gyokan, would it be fair to say that the Ottomans almost had a parametric architecture and that's what Alpasan was looking at? Yeah. And, you know, don't, don't think about the, the, the uh, building shape. It's a, uh, the mosque or uh, a kulia or a church or something. You know, the uh, next generation will change their uh, program uh, 
and also the the, the uh, important thing to dimension around size and uh, relationship about the buildings combination. Exactly, this building combination you can see here. This on this bottom uh, model, which is a kind of it shows in model form Alpaslan's theories of how the Ottomans built up these systems based on algorithmic principles. And there is always, we know, in Turkic and, uh, uh, and even Central Asian uh, architecture, there's always this uh, thrust towards a kind of mathematical, rational, almost what we would call a parametric architecture. That's how it was approached. And this is something that's, I think, under uh, valued and under uh, uh, not so much known about Ottoman architecture. We focus more on the domes and these kind of structural aspects, but this whole uh, rationalization of space in this vast system, I think, with this slide you can see here. Now, let's take the last five minutes, Gyokan, to see how this affected your work and some of uh, your uh, GAD's projects. Uh, and for example, in Media City, which is a new generation city from 2017, where you're taking a look at uh, organization of cities, and patterns there. So this kind of pattern, attempting to find patterns in cities, it seems to be a kind of uh, uh, an influence of Alpaslan's work on your work. Yeah, the, the, we work on the, the new site. It's all white paper, let's say. And how can we build it up with the new uh, generation, uh, new kind of the, the building uh, 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 relationship you know, in new city, and uh, we created some uh, pieces, what we see now, and then we put them the uh, randomly uh, uh, and also algorithmically. So this would be, might be the difference between maybe Alpaslan uh, and you, uh, because you're, re you're regarding a certain degree. You have the same uh, the two by two, four by three, but you're introducing some other. Uh, randomizations or perhaps uh, other uh, uh, less rational aspects in, in, into the work. Yeah, and uh, and then put them to, together in the, uh, as a building block. Surrounded with some uh, the uh, square and also the, the streets and uh, on the uh, uh, on the uh, other buildings and other buildings and also. We created a different kind of the, the composition. So in this, I think it's clear, clear to see here that you were using this Ottoman system, but uh, you're using as a way to organize different types of uh, urban volumes, squares, arcades, gardens, things like this. There's often talked about Ottoman architecture, but in fact, Ottoman architecture has this very deep uh, sensibility to how actually people are living in these spaces too. Uh, can you describe a little bit, for example, in this, uh, media city, these different streets and how people uh, 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 live and act in this, in this kind of new city. What, what's, 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 what's important for you here uh, in terms of living and this uh, uh, building blocks? Uh, randomly, in, uh, the, we started the project before the pandemic time, maybe one year ago, maybe more than one year ago, before the pandemic time, and uh, uh, started think about the, how can we build up our uh, new uh, civilization? Uh, how can we work and live at the same time without any, uh, uh, any uh, differentiations, the, right. city, the, uh, you know, the, the office part and also you know, the living part and also the, the school part. Uh, there is, the, you know, the, we cried that there is no any uh, any any uh, uh, border uh, divided by uh, modern uh, urban uh, planning uh, ideas. Right. And so how can we make uh, create all of them together? The right. live and work. And you know the the, uh, the uh, share, right? And uh, that kind of you know the uh, uh, produce, right? So in this image, for example, here we have you know urban farming, uh, yeah. we have uh, sheep, 
Uh, we have people doing athletics. There's a market here. So this is kind of a proposition for a new type of city based on this organizational principle that you, that yeah. you and uh, Alpastan uh, had a conversation with in terms of the Ottoman past. Now, uh, also in this image of this next project, we saw a different approach. This is the Istinye Park project. And again, Alpastan's influence in the geometry of uh, how these, these, these buildings move up the hillside. So you were talking earlier about how the Ottomans were able to kind of adjust based on setting in context these different geometries. Uh, can you speak a little bit about how that is here uh, applied in this work? Yeah, we, we, uh, we try to understand the uh, conditions. Where is the uh, 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 sun rising and you know the sunset part and also the the uh, noise part because of you know the the, right. the, uh, the road uh, goes down and also where is the, uh, uh, the silent part and uh, we, we, we divided the project with that kind of the uh, different kind of uh, facets as a, as a kind of urban as a kind of urban nexus you can see here for example all these activities in this kind of uh, and, system and, coming together. Exactly, uh. and then uh, where is the exactly uh, 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 public area, also the silent area for uh, right. uh, the resident. Now let's look at this Halich Port project. This is also a project from 2014 on the Golden Horn uh, and a project that uh, Alpasan was involved in. Uh, uh, and looking at uh, the, shore, the shoreline condition, uh, of the Halic, which is a very old, again, you know, part of Istanbul, uh, and looking at how it's developing. And then you guys came up with this kind of approach. Can you explain a little bit about what we're seeing here in terms of the Golden Horn and what you tried to do in this design for, yeah. for the Halic? You know, the, the Halic part, uh, especially uh, for Ottoman Empire, uh, uh, built the, the, some... Uh, uh, Ships and uh, uh, you know the uh, repairing the, the some ships and uh, today the Halish is very uh, interesting uh, 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 a kind of the names you know the golden horn right very important in uh, not only the uh, Ottoman Empire also the. Or, uh, all that kind of science and uh, history, uh, very interesting uh, inner uh, inner sea, and we we would like to try to making that that the the that the shipyard uh, 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 transforming the right. uh, uh, hospitality area. I okay. think. Very important, but very important uh, area for not only Istanbul, but also the whole Mediterranean part. Uh, let's finish up the presentation and get on to the questions by looking at this last project, this Kepez yeah. Cappadocia. This is not Istanbul. This is in uh, central Anatolia in the Cappadocia area between Kayseri and Nevşehir. here. Again, an old part of the... Uh, uh, and in this project, you tried to combine... Uh, stone architecture uh, with uh, the local uh, Cappadocia. Can you describe? And here we have a similar kind of approach, I think, that you would see in uh, Appa Sun's work, this kind of analyzing all the different possibilities in section in this kind of very rational way using sketches uh, of these different uh, urban conditions. Uh, sketches that you've made, these are part of your sketches. Uh, and then taking a look at how these, so this is very much an Alpastan approach that you apply to Cappadocia. So as this last project we're presenting today, Gyokan, can you explain, you know, in this Cappadocia, what, what, what was important to you when you were developing this, uh, this, this kind of parametric approach, but also keeping a, 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 a kind of uh, continuation of some of these th uh, traditions uh, of the Ottoman architecture we spoke about earlier? Yeah, actually, the Alpastan brought uh, on the table uh, understanding to... Uh, the space and uh, relationship, how can we uh, build it up and then live on them. And, uh, and uh, you can see the different kind of the, uh, some uh, uh, spaces uh, 
uh, the, we try to not only do the the shape also uh, uh, quality how can we live in the in that place you know the, some you can say some uh, uh, air uh, chimneys and uh, some spaces to, uh, how can we breathe right we feel good and Got it. So it's a kind of livability aspect that you're presenting and then taking this system and trying to optimize it. Okay, I think we have some questions, Gyokai. What do you, uh, one question uh, anonymous uh, architecture uh, architect asked is, how would you compare Al Asaman with his contemporaries, people of his generation? Uh, what's, what's, what was, uh, uh, how does he compare to his generation of architects uh, in terms of what he did? And uh, for me, the uh, my modernist time, let's say 20th century, the uh, uh, prom uh, 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 promised many things on by some materials and some techniques, but uh, we couldn't reach that kind of the quality. Right. Right. Because of the, the you know, uh, the, some material uh, promised, but they couldn't uh, make a uh, new uh, life and uh, new, uh, uh, new uh, quality or uh, some uh, that kind of the, uh, uh, promises. But uh, always if we looked at the 100 years ago, 20 years ago, the buildings, but let's, let's call that ruin BT, there is no frame and, and any, any kind of the, the quality, but looks fantastically good. Right. That, 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 that look yeah. aspect and the feel aspect of it is good. We got another question, Gyokan. Uh, Diana Dark uh, asks, uh, when you were describing this system, is it uh, Mimar Sinan system? Uh, and and uh, how would you d describe it in more detail? I'll just give a quick answer. Uh, there has been an over, and Mimar Sinan is obviously the master architect, and he's a, a, a codifies a lot of the things. But I think uh, there was too much emphasis placed on Sinan. And uh, I think the, the system that Al Pastan shows is that the Ottoman system, starting way uh, into the Bursa early Baelic period, uh, had already started to create its this rash this, this, this kind of approach. Uh, so I would think that if you, uh, I think uh, Alpasan's book is not available in English. That's something Jokan and I have been trying to do, make it in English. But I think, uh, uh, to my mind, that would be, you know, Ottoman architecture is something that's broader and wider uh, than Mimar Sinan. I don't know what your opinion is, Jokan, on that. Sinan versus Ottoman architecture. How much do we see in Sinan? Uh, of what Alpasan has approached in terms of of, of of his of his of his uh, studies, it's very difficult question. Now, how much do you feel that it's if it's it, an Ottoman architecture has been really organized around Sinan so much? So what do you think are some of the other principles that that you just describe some of the principles that uh, in the Ottoman architecture that was predates Sinan? Yeah, in my opinion, the, the Sinan is a uh, is a. Uh, it's not the formula, also uh, an object or, you know, uh, a more, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, 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 it's, a, it's a big name. Right, right. Under the under the Sinan, there there is uh, uh, is a, a the history almost maybe ten thousand years old. Right. Uh, the Sinan is not the result. It, it is not the uh, uh, last version. Right. I think that they continue uh, today and then tomorrow. Right. And it's about you know the dimensions and uh, and uh, formulas. Right. So these formulas, I think Alpasl Ataman, in his understanding of Ottoman architecture, his ability to create this research 
has completely everything to do with the fact that he was sketching and drawing. I think uh, he understood through this long operation of almost 40, 50 years. And I think it's something you can't do as an architectural historian, just looking at images. He was able through his extremely detailed sketching to understand this. And I think this kind of uh, hand, what you constantly mentioned this kind of, I think is important. Can you describe what you feel is a timeliness? That's a question, timelessness in Thanks. the architecture. Can you explain that a little bit? What's the timelessness you aspect? Know, and that was a question that's asked. Yeah, you know, so today we, we get together the Unisembre under the Unisembre name. Yes. Unisembre represents the uh, kind of the humbleness. Right. And uh, Anatolian uh, uh, feelings, especially uh, 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 especially the humanizing uh, uh, beyond that kind of to any in, uh, uh, empires because you know the 12,000 years there are many many uh, empires that live on uh, Anatolia but you know Siemre is in the kind of you know the poem right you know it said uh, always uh, 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 Talking about the mean, mean, and humble. Right. As you say, there's a certain humility in Yunus Emre that you see in so, Alpaslan's uh, and your uh, his approach, because he was a very, I think, uh, he he was uh, a kind of humble person. In fact, he didn't really go out of his way to show many many of his works to that, many people. Exactly. Then, uh, if you if you wanna uh, understand Yunus Emre or uh, Alpaslan Ataman. It's the same. Also, Yogan Karakush, it's the same. <laughs> yeah, and yeah we, we try to be humble about our, 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 our background. It's the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're also, you know, I think there's a humility because the ideas are so timeless and universal that it's, it, it's, hard, to, uh, it's hard to say, you know, you're responsible because I, really, you, you get at some really long, as you said, 12,000 years of civilization. Uh, uh, Exactly. Uh, I would like to uh, 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 refer the people who right. listen to us, understanding the uh, 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 baby steps. Right. Yunusemre or Gokhan Karakush or Mehmet Karakush or Alpasan Ataman. What what trying to understand and uh, explain to us. Right. Now, in terms of, uh, you just described Anatolia, uh, what, what, you know, th there's certain national boundaries have been created over the last 200, 300 years. Can you, as a, we have one question here saying, you know, scholars studying Ottoman architecture have been long uh, uh, forced into research into looking at different national boundaries, you know, Balkan and Turkey, and then you have the, uh, Arabic-speaking uh, countries. Uh, but it seemed like uh, Alpaslan Ataman was able to kind of cross all these national boundaries because he was kind of constantly sketching. Uh, uh, you know, what, what do you feel has been uh, the approach in terms of uh, the empire of Ottoman architecture? And they were able to apply this kind of work from the Balkans all the way to uh, uh, the... Uh, uh, do you agree with that? They were able to apply it universally all over uh, the empire without uh, national restriction. Yeah, tricky things. If you look at the, his uh, drawings and uh, uh, searchings, you can see not only the Ottoman Empire's standardization about, you know, uh, the, the culiers and the mosques, also you can see the, 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 uh, the houses. Right, the domestic architecture. The, in 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 Safranbolu, in uh, Sultan uh, Bay or Doan Bay or anywhere in Europe, Amasya, right? Same standardizations, right? Uh, understanding the material, wood or stone, right? Or small islands. How can we build it up to our? Uh, 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 um, small houses or small rooms, whatever, or mosque or masjid. 
Right. What is the art conditions? Right. And this is a kind of a question about the human condition at the same time you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's been, uh, it's been an hour. We have to close up. Uh, I think we're over uh, our thing by a couple of minutes, so sorry about that. Uh, I wanted to, the, also, that we have a question from Uyku Adel Akfarat wants to know, a young person studying architecture, if there's an opportunity to work with experience or you can offer, give us a call. Uh, I mean, you give Kagan a call. We have the GAT Academy, which is a, a school that, uh, that Gyokan has organized and that I participate in occasionally. So anybody interested in uh, working with uh, GAD can also would apply to the this, academy. Would you say something? Yeah, and I'll, I'll give Gyokan the last, uh, you can have the last word of the deck. Thank you. Thinking by hand. Thinking by hand. Thinking by hand because you can un understand architecture, not just with the mind, but spatially and with the hand. So that's yeah. how we'll... Not only the build up to anything on the earth, also yes. uh, a spaceship. Yes. No, it's, it's, it's no longer, we're not longer limited by the earth, exactly. And I want to thank the Eunice Emre Institute. Uh, this is the start of our architecture and design talk series that we'll have on Thursdays uh, for the next few months. Uh, we're going to be talking about, just like we talked about with Gyokan today, looking at overarching principles of uh, Turkish culture in Anatolia, uh, and how it's trans tr transmitted through the 20th century into practitioners like Gyokan. You saw in his work for Media City, how he's, he's able to take some of these principles uh, through Alpas and Ataman's work and apply them to new cities. Uh, and it shows the uh, level of continuity you can approach through timeless architecture. Uh, so this is a pro this, I think this is something that Turkish culture can uh, provide the world is this aspect of uh, continuity of civilizations for many, many years. This is what we're uh, the geography of Turkey and Anatolia is about. And I think that's something we'll explore in further discussions. So I want to thank Mehmet Karakuch, the Linus Emre Institute, uh, Ayşe Gökçen, also for their help, uh, Yunus uh, Emre himself uh, for the technical assistance and Gizem Uçar uh, and Nicole Alganati for their production help. So that's for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us on uh, Yunus Emre E. Londra on Twitter, Instagram, we can address some of your questions there. Thank you very much and have a good evening.